This is part of the preparation for the Jazz Archive at Hamlin College, which will deal primarily with the days of the Basie Band and the life of Joe Williams. Uh, we're pleased to have with us today Jillian Williams, who is the wife of Joe and who has been part of the scene with the Basie Band and with Joe for many years. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you would tell us uh, how you first met Joe and, and how the romance developed into a, a marriage. Well, there, there's an old uh, saying that comedians use that they met in a revolving door and they've been going around together ever since. But in our case, it's actually true because I was working in New York and um, New York City and some English friends came to town and wanted to celebrate because they were on their way back to the UK. And so we went out for the evening and we went to see George Shearing, who was at the Embers in those days. And then we went on to the Waldorf Astoria where the Count Basie Orchestra was playing with Sarah Vaughan and Joe Williams. We were already familiar with Joe and the band, of course, and Sarah. And after the show, uh, we were down in the lobby going out onto Park Avenue, and I got out onto the street at, as Joe was coming back into the hotel because he'd forgotten his putter, which is all important to him, <laughs> as you probably know. Still, at that <laughs> Still his favorite yeah. thing. And so I, you know, I was going out and he was coming in and uh, we glanced at each other and I found myself left out alone on the street and realized that he was talking to my friends in the lobby and Marshall Royal was also there. He was in the band at the time. And we all ended up going to Birdland together, which was great fun. And that's how we initially met. And then later on, uh, Joe came to England, I went back to England, and Joe came to England to do a command performance. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I tried to contact him, because there was a little something. And I tried to contact him, and uh, he was busy or lost my number or something, and we missed each other. But then they came back to England later on, a few months later, and we met again, and we've been going around together ever since. Marvelous. <laughs> and what year was that? We've met in 1957, mm -hmm. August 1957. That was not a very tactful question. Why? <laughs> I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Can't hide our ages. <laughs> but uh, when you married him, he was in the Basie Band. He was with the Basie Band. Uh, n not actually when we were married, no. Um, but we we had been going around together for several years when he was in the Basie I Band. See. So there was a certain amount of traveling with the band and yeah. following the band and Tell us about getting to know everyone. The Basie bus. Oh, the Basie bus was wonderful. I was always very cognizant of the fact that a, a woman on the bus is like a bump on a log, you know? That's the band's home. It's where they can get off stage and relax and say what they want to say and do what they want to do. And having a strange woman there was really something they didn't need. So one tried to stay in your own little niche, you know. I tried to stay with Joe and always sit in the right place because everybody had assigned seats and you, you didn't sit over there because that was Sonny Payne's seat. You didn't sit here because that was Marshall Royal's row and so on. So I tried to stay out of it, but they were always so tolerant. Nobody ever made me feel a nuisance, you know. I inflicted that on myself a bit, I think. Uh -huh. But I also had the company of Joe Newman's wife, Rigmore. And so there were two of us traveling and we had we had wonderful time. We ate tuna out of the can and champagne out of paper cups <laughs> and it was it was a great education and great fun. Yeah. Uh, in in the uh in the interview we had this morning with Joe and Clark Terry. Mm -hmm. They talked about uh, Jim Crowism as on their travels. Did yeah. you run into that at all, the Basie Band? I didn't. If we did, I didn't notice didn't it. Didn't notice. No, well, you probably didn't. I then. didn't notice yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I I didn't think about that, and I I would not go to an a place where obviously it would not be approved that Joe and I were together. No, I wasn't no. referring to that. Oh, you weren't? Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no. 
that that Jim Crow was directed against the blacks. Oh. Where, where, the, well, for example, <clears throat> the bands that used to travel in the South mm -hmm. had terrible trouble eating and finding places finding to sleep. Finding places and so on. to stay. Yeah. And uh, I'm reminded of Callaway, who eventually bought himself a rail car, which served as their home every place yeah. they went. And I just wondered if the Basie Band ran. I've never heard of any problem with the Basie Band, but. I, I really didn't notice anything yeah, okay. like that. It went over my head if it was mm. there. Did you, do you find that it, that uh, idea of big bands traveling like they did is kind of a, a lost thing now? There's a, still a few around, but in fact, we saw the Basie Band uh, about a month ago. But was it, a, was it a hard life at that point? Because I always wanted to do that, and I always had maybe like a, not a clear picture of what it was really like. I would think um, it was hard in, in the uh, sense that, uh, you know, 13 one-nighters in a row in different towns is pretty tough. Yeah. So from the point of view of sleeping and eating, it was hard, but I think that's what they like to do because yeah. they all love to play. There was yeah. a tremendous um, spirit of, of loyalty among the Basie band. And it, it sort of shows in the way Basie conducted, you know. I mean, yeah. he only had to point a finger or yeah. nod or something, and that was his conducting. There was no yeah. waving his yeah. arms yeah. in front of the right. band. There was a great uh, cohesion in the band, and I think they loved it. I think they enjoyed it. They were, they were just a wonderful group of people. There's still that cohesion in the alumni, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I think really so. think so. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to put words in your mouth, but you once told me about after Joe had left the band that he would get up in the middle of the night and go down and see it off. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, I, I, he used to, um, if the band was leaving at one in the morning to go to drive to Boston or drive to Philadelphia or somewhere, he would get up and go down to the hotel and just wave them goodbye. Oh. You know, that, nice. that you never leave the Basie Band to mm. this day if they're within earshot. Yeah. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. You never leave yeah. the Basie Band. They go back all the time. Joe does quite a lot of concerts with them still. Yes, right. I know. Which is fun. Yeah. Do you recall who were the... I know in the Basie Band they always had the great tenor sax players. Do you recall who was, was in the band at that time? I recall, um, if I work really hard, I can recall everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I have to work at it. Trumpet, well, second. Billy Mitchell was there. Uh -huh. um, for Sometimes Eddie Davis was there. Yeah. Lock uh, Lock Marshall, Lockjaw Davis. Marshall Royal, of course, was yeah. always there. Mm. And uh, Poopsie, Charlie Folks was Fox, baritone. Yeah. And yeah. one of our greater friends in the band was Benny Powell, who was trombone player. And Al Gray and Henry Coker, also trombone players. And our absolutely darling friend, Freddie Green. Oh, yes. Oh, Freddie was just a gem. And uh, Sonny Payne was the drummer. And Eddie Jones was the bass player. Mm -hmm. And we had um, Joe Newman, Wendell Cully. Um, Sweets. Thad Jones. No, Sweets wasn't in the Sweets band when I was with then. him. Sweets was gone. Yeah. And Clark Terry was gone. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, Snooky, um, yes, yeah, Snooky and Young. Thad yeah. and Sonny Cohen. Yeah. And from time to time, but when Joe Newman left, Al Aarons came in. But Joe and Joe, Joe Newman and Joe Williams left the band on the same day. Oh, they did. Oh. Yeah. And Mrs. Basie gave them some presentation up at the Apollo, I think, with Sarah. Sarah was there. We have a picture of it. Oh. So, but I, I remember all of them. They were wonderful. Yeah. It was a happy time in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. Well, we've spoken with a few of those yeah. members. But, uh, yeah. Joe went on to become a great single and a great, and his own group, of course. Uh, were there tough times in, when he broke loose on his own? No, not, uh, not professionally tough no. times, no. Mm. I, I, in fact, I, I don't know any tough times. Um, Basie saw him off. Basie came up and introduced him on his first uh, single job, which mm. was in Boston. And um, he went out for a while with uh, Sweets and a group. Yes, I Jerome know. Richardson yeah. and Sweets. And um, a wonderful group of 
musicians, and he always seemed to have work. We never had any bad years that I can mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. So I think he's done very well. And actually, he seems to be getting better and better. Everybody thinks he's getting yeah. his voice is well, still Well, I told wonderful. you that. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I think he and Tony Bennett are the only two musicians of the older ranks whose voices are better now than they were when they were younger. Maybe Mel Torme, maybe. Yes, Mel, I think you could put Mel in there, certainly, he's wonderful. But I think also that they have become, um, this sounds ridiculous to say at Joe's age, but they've become more sophisticated yes. in their presentation. Joe is, is now much more than a singer. When he was with Basie, you know, his, his his sort of uh, trademark was that he would come on very serious and just stand there and sing. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he, he yeah. never did all this snapping to snapping yeah. and yeah. marching yeah. up yeah. and yeah. Now he's developed into, you know, a rapport with the audience and he takes the mic and he goes up and down, he talks to people and he makes jokes in between the mm -hmm. songs and it's more of a, a presentation, I think, that, that you, relaxes him more too. And he uses his voice more. Yes. Yes. In more different ways. Yeah. The f falsetto, for example, the that famous recording of "Here's to Life," mm. you know, is I think fantastic. Yeah. Well, he, his uh, party piece is in the evening uh, when yeah. he goes from mm. way up high yeah. to yeah. way down low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That always yeah. astonishes yeah. people. But obviously, there's much more freedom when you're a solo performer mm -hmm. than when you're with the band. You yeah. have to stick to a certain routine. Right. How many how many songs would he usually sing on a night with a bassy band? Um, with the bassy band. With the bassy yeah. band, oh. it would depend on the presentation. But I I would say sort of maybe five or six yeah. or something like mm -hmm. that. Sometimes yeah. only three, yeah. depending what it was, you know, and how many shows they had mm -hmm. to do. Right. <laughs> they put so, in some long hours on some of those things, didn't they? Yes. The, yes. They did. Afternoons and... But they would play different things. They would sometimes play dances where there was um, perhaps less for the singer to do. But yeah. then people always crowded around the stage. Yeah. People didn't yeah. always dance. I thought that was fun. I didn't know that happened because we didn't have that in England when I lived there. Oh, it did here. I know, oh, yeah. and, and the band would play and everybody just takes their partner and, and sort of stands mm. up and jogs mm. in front of the stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and especially when the singer is performing, you know, they're yeah. gazing into their eyes and it's great fun. But they don't do a lot of that anymore. Well, I've noticed uh, Joe seems to be spreading his wings. This new CD that's about to be released, or has just been released. Has been. Tell the, us the about that one. Feel the spirit. Yeah. That's something Joe has, did he tell you about that? It's something yes. he's wanted to do for abs ever since I've known him, because um, years ago his great friend was Jimmy Jones, who uh, was a wonderful piano mm -hmm. player and arranger. And I've heard him discuss that with Jimmy back in the early 60s, that he's had this in mind to, he calls it, um, a giving thanks, a giving back for all the fun and pleasure he's had, I suppose. And uh, he's been dying to do it, never could get it on, no one was interested in recording it, until John Snyder of Telarc said he would like to do it. And so finally it's been achieved right. and he's, he's happy with it, I think. Have you heard it? I've heard most of it, yes. Uh -huh. yes. You like it? I, l I love some of it, yes. Uh -huh. I, you know, that gospel stuff, you can, oh, yeah. you, you can hardly keep still. And he's mm. got Marlena Shaw mm -hmm. on some of them, too, oh, yeah. and she's yeah. a knockout. So it's really uh, oh, it's fun, great. and he loves it. And he's giving the proceeds to um, a scholarship fund, I think. The one at, in Nevada? I, I don't know about that one or whether he's going to work up another one, but he's... Uh, that's the way his way of we'll giving one. back, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, Tell us about life in Las Vegas. Life Where in you, Las you Vegas. You guys hang out yeah. most of the time. Well, life in Las Vegas is um, is surprisingly dull. I, we're very quiet when we're at home. We rarely go out. We're very apt to sleep in front of television in the evening, like many other people, and. Um, 
the, the, when Joe comes home, his, his pleasure is to be home and yeah. eat at home and mm -hmm. go and play golf if he feels like it or just sit and relax and listen to his music. And so we don't go out a lot. We hardly ever eat out. And the only things that drag us out are when uh, people like Steve and Edie come to town and okay. we go to the, the, uh, one of the hotels, wherever mm -hmm. they are, and see them. Or somebody really special. We just went to see Jack Jones in the Guys and Dolls just before we came here. And um, that's the only thing that takes us out. Otherwise, we, we just sit there with our animals and yes. enjoy the climate. <laughs> How many animals do we have right now? We uh, just have um, two dogs and three cats. Oh, you're down to a pretty low. We are way down, yes, because I promised Joe that as they left us, I would not replace. Mm. So oh, I, see. I have to be very careful yeah. not to overcrowd us. <laughs> Can you give me a, an idea of what the English um, audience was like for jazz music when when you first were going back and forth? And the, very enthusiastic, yeah. very enthusiastic, and also in Japan, very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, the jazz artists would be the first to say that they're better known in yeah. these other countries yeah, than sure. in the United States. Right. And I remember in Japan, um, a man coming up to Joe with a whole album of um, things about Hank Jones that we were talking about. He had Hank's whole history, all his records. Mm. He had all Joe's stuff. He had all Sweetsy's stuff. Uh -huh. And this is a man in, in a Japanese gentleman yeah. in Japan. Yeah. 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 And you know that's that would be rare here, I yes. think. Well, the, they're much more appreciated overseas. They're treated like royalty. Yes, in, the, in Japan and and uh, Europe. Switzerland, Germany, Yeah, all which is why so many uh, escaped to France and Paris. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Johnny Griffin lives in uh, Paris, in France, and uh, some others live in Denmark. Copenhagen has a bunch yes, of them, Denmark. too. Yeah. Ernie in Wilkins? Denmark. Pardon? Uh, Ernie Wilkins? Is he? I think he's... I don't know if Ernie Wilkins... Is Ernie still with us? I don't I, think I he is. His so brother so lives in... Musicians Union. Jimmy Denmark, lives... Yeah, his brother Jimmy lives in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. well, Jimmy mm -hmm. Wilkins. He and, and the musicians in, in England would pick up on American styles and yes. to be mostly from record, I would imagine. The and great band when I was living there was Ted Heath. Ted Heath, yeah. Remember Ted Heath? There's, yeah. he's, they still play his great yes. recordings. And Joe did a, a wonderful uh, radio show with Ted Heath in which he sang um, Old Man River at breakneck speed. Oh, really? Which was a tremendous success, oh, yes. My father, who had never heard Joe sing at that point, listened to it, must have been great. and he said, that was Joe. My God, he can really sing. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all very impressive. That was great. Right. Um, have you noticed over the years, um, has Joe been affected by changes in the music business? more than, than, you know, or has he kind of no, kept he, his own style? And he has never changed his, his belief in, in, in what he wants to do, you yeah. know. I mean, he would never go to rock and roll or pop music or right. country and western. Right, because some You'll people tried it. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are trying it, and I suppose being very successful. One example would be Harry Connick, who used to sing yeah. Um, big band stuff and, and do nice things. He's now gone to pop and noise and rock and roll and mm -hmm. stuff, which yeah. is probably making him more money, but it's deserting the cause. <laughs> it seemed like he was pretty successful to me, but and, know, and he was. Someone yeah. who's sort of come back is Barry Manilow, who, mm. who's done a wonderful oh. big band yeah. album. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, so yeah. it'll, it'll never die, but. It probably won't ever be the same, uh -huh. the big band. What, what do you think the future business. of jazz is? The, you know, I, I look at, at the, uh, what I call world-class jazz players, like Clark Terry, for mm -hmm. instance. I don't see a Clark Terry on the horizon. Well, I think there are some. Isn't there somebody really? wonderful called Roy Hargrove yeah. who's coming? The Clark feels there are. I look, you know, I think so. I know, yeah. but. And Joe goes round to colleges 
and universities, and he is enormously heartened by the music and the sound. And we were in Seattle, where they have a, a choral group with no music, or whatever you call that. Acapella. Acapella. And there are about uh, eight or a dozen of them. They are terrific. They're called the Something Sounds. I forgot. I shouldn't have brought it up if I can't yeah. remember the name, but I don't remember the name. They are marvelous. Uh, and uh. Joe says, as long as there are kids making that kind of sound, there's certainly hope. And um, he, there's a singer in um, a college in um, Colorado, who used to be there anyway, I suppose he's graduated now, who did a wonderful imitation of Joe. Oh, really? Singing. <laughs> he, it could have been Joe. Oh, wow. We had a tape of it. He was wonderful. <laughs> and I, I think there are people coming up, and there's certainly enthusiasm for jazz orchestras. We have a very good jazz orchestra in the, at the university in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Frank Galliardi and the UNLV Jazz mm -hmm. Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And we have Louis Belson comes and plays with them, and Joe's done concerts with them. So I think they can be encouraged. Yeah. I think they mentioned, the, the two of them this morning, some of the, the big differences. There's a lot of um, the young musicians who spend a lot of time in colleges and, and learn very technically and so forth, and they have to learn what to do with it yeah. later on. Yeah. which. In the earlier days when people were mostly listening from records and then getting into the situations and playing in the, the traveling bands, that hearing thing was, there, you either there, developed it or you were gone. There aren't a lot of good places to let that develop. Right. It's somewhere. like you, you have to feel it, because I'm sure when Clark Terry was coming up, there were no courses in jazz. Right. But now you no. go to school to learn yeah. jazz. Then he teaches it. And you yes, and you go to seminars for the weekend to learn yes. jazz. Yeah. They do that in England. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a, a great friend who's a retired doctor who loves piano, but never sort of got the hang of jazz. He plays wonderful music, but he goes to seminars in England to learn jazz. Uh -huh. That, like you say, that's sort of something that I always thought had to come from inside you, that you, you made up for yourself. Yeah, it, it partly does, but it also, as you mentioned, the, the, the young the students don't have as much opportunity That's to right. get out and actually do it in front That's of people. Right. I mean, they have, there are great, I've heard great college bands, and there, and there are some terrific players well, out there. It's just a little harder for them to really get, uh, to take all those skills and then put them into real life. You well, there, there are, as you say, there are a lot of colleges that have fine, fine big bands. Yeah. Yes. The one in, what, North Texas State or yeah. where it is down there, and, mm -hmm. and there's one in Colorado, and there's yes. one in Las Vegas, and they, somewhere, I forget where, they have a big contest every year with all these bands. Yeah. But what do the kids do when they get out of there? Yes, you know, where do they go? Where do they right. go to develop their skills, yeah. you know? We had, um, I don't know if Joe told you this, but he was working in Washington, D.C. last week, and they didn't have a drummer. Norman, who, Norman Simmons, booked a drummer who was a student at William Patterson College. Did mm -hmm. they tell you this? No. And uh, his name was Paul Wells, and Norman thought he showed great promise, and so he booked him for this job. And Paul had to take finals during oh, the week of the... Oh of the gig, so he said, I can't miss this opportunity. So he went to his principal and said, I have a chance to work for a week with Joe Williams, and um, could I postpone taking my finals for a while? They said, go, oh, go, nice. <laughs> this is the best experience you'll ever have. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we had him for a week, was and okay? uh, it was like a field trip. He was terrific. Oh, he good. was a charming young man, 21 uh -huh. years old. Uh -huh. um, very interested, keen, watched Norman like a hawk because he didn't know Joe's music at all. We never met him till the first show, like wow. five minutes before <laughs> the first show. And um, Joe had trouble with his name because he was unfamiliar. Anyway, he, he really worked hard. He listened to Joe, he listened to Henry Johnson, the guitar player who was helping him. And um, he, he just was fantastic. I mean, Roland Pete, when he has all those yeah. exchanges yeah. with Joe, yeah. Yeah. he was fabulous. People were applauding in the middle of the, oh, of the song. So there's one that shows promise. <laughs> but like you say, what does he do when he graduates? Yeah, what does he do for yeah. an encore? Well, maybe yeah. he'll go with Joe Williams on the road. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. 
But he had a wonderful time, and he was awfully good, and, and that was very encouraging. Yeah. Did you ever, um, when when Joe was with the Basie Band, uh, did they do they did some recordings? That, and wondered if you ever got to see that process. And no, I I never saw Joe and the Basie Band record. Record. Uh -huh. No. Um, I went to a number of recordings. I, I feel very privileged you know, being with Joe to have met so many wonderful people. I remember going to a Nat King Cole recording mm. once in New York. That was great. Yeah. Nat sang with his hat on all the time. That's the only thing that bothered me. He had that <laughs> checkered hat that yeah. he used to wear. Yeah. Oh, he sang with done. the hat on. Well, but what anyway, came out was pretty what good came out <laughs> didn't, yeah. Right, that was great. Neat. I've been to a lot of recording sessions, but um, never with the band. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I find, I believe from the records that I have and have played that every singer I know of sings better with a bassy band than anybody else. Well, Sinatra, for one, uh, Tony Bennett, uh, Sarah Vaughan. There's a whole collection of the, the, all the great vocalists recorded with Basie at one time or another. Mm -hmm. And they just, you put them all together and they're just fabulous. Have you ever listened to them? But nobody holds a candle to Joe Williams and the well, Basie band. Oh, I band. understand that. But I'm, <laughs> all yeah, these people, but, all these wonderful names, these wonderful professionals who are big, big stars, have never come up to Joe and the Basie band. I understand. Don't you agree with I, that? All I'm saying, yes. Or am I prejudiced? No, you're absolutely right <laughs> to understand what I'm saying. I'm saying they sing better. With the band. With, with the, the band than they yes. do with anybody Nelson else. or anybody, yeah. Yeah. really. I mean, they, 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 they have a different timbre in their voices. They're just, you know, that rhythm is yeah. incredible. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a spark in the Basie band yeah. that... Yeah. The others don't have. Can you tell us a little more about Freddie Green. I mean, oh, I mean, what can I tell you oh, about well. Freddie? He was so he was just um, a wonderful, steady influence yeah. going through the band mm -hmm. all the time. He was very retiring. You know, he never got in the way or showed off or was obvious anywhere. He just was there. Pounding away and besides being, being the rock of the rhythm charming. section, he was yes. the rock of the people too. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. He was really nice. He was also a very keen golfer. He was mm. responsible for Joe becoming a golf junkie mm -hmm. because Joe joined the band with tennis rackets that he probably oh. has told you. Oh. Has he? And oh, um, they, within a, a very short time, uh, nobody played tennis, so they hauled him out on the golf course, uh, Freddie Green and Marshall Royal, I think. And um, from then on, he was lost to golf and the oh. tennis rackets have rotted away somewhere. <laughs> We, uh, we've just lost Marshall, as you know. Yes, very sad. Uh, they, there's been a rumor around for years that, that Marshall had, and Basie had trouble because Basie wouldn't give Marshall solo time. Is that really I, I, or? I don't know anything about uh -huh. that, but Basie did give Marshall solo time. Uh, well, he I know that. a number of I things, know, but, but I, I didn't know that. But he wasn't featured, uh, you know, the way. Oh. Lockjaw Davis and Lester Young right. and all the tenors were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, and, in and, fact, uh, and I, you know, and I talked to Marshall. Like I never had the, the nerve to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to ask. I was going to see that he was asked in these interviews, and now we won't get him. But. Right. Marshall was um, always uh, like in charge of the band. Yeah, he was a concert Yeah, master. and he he yeah. uh, conducted the band. Yes. And so on. At uh, times, and he you know, he never lost that. No. You'd, he'd have a group at a jazz party, and he'd, be, and he'd, he'd just take yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was very efficient at his job, and he yes. knew what he was doing. Yeah. He was there 20 years. Yeah. That's a long haul. It sure is. Yes. Traveling on the bus. Except for Freddie Green. Except for Freddie, yes, that's right. I guess now he I just wrong. read a story in this jazz anecdotes book about Freddie Green, and that when Freddie got his first amplifier, he wanted to do some soloing himself. And the guys in the band said that every time he went to solo, the rhythm section would like 
not happen because he wasn't. <laughs> so they would stop sabotage his amp every night. <laughs> so he'd go d do a solo, and oh, he'd have to go back to this, and he finally just gave up. Oh, you know? now I don't I know didn't if it's know true, about but that. <laughs> it's a great. <laughs> It, it, you know. Well, he has one solo. I've forgotten what tune is on, and which is a big was a big joke. It's one chord. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's in Little Darling, I think. Yeah. At oh, the beginning yeah. of Little Darling, he goes. Brrrm, and then yeah. Oh, yeah. Says, that's, ah, a that's, solo, huh? that's a solo. <laughs> yes, but we've got a, a record of um, Freddie singing. Ah. No. Um, them Their Eyes, I think it is. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, my cousin Andrew is a great jazz collector, and he sent Joe a tape of Freddie singing years ago. I can't remember what the occasion was, but he, he was quite reasonable. It was sort of like a joke, mm -hmm. I think. I don't think not it was. Not with Basie. I think with Basie. Oh, really? Well, not standing up in front of the band, yeah, but, yeah. but singing Them Their Eyes with a band. Mm -hmm. So I'll I imagine darned. it was Basie. I'll be darned. Oh. <laughs> so he did do other things. Oh. <laughs> That's great. But he's always been considered the rock of yeah. the band. Yes. Yeah. And you've been through so many wonderful people in that band, haven't you? Absolutely, yes. And My goodness. I and so many good friends. I was just going to say, I'll bet you have lots of good friends. Lots of good friends. Well, Benny Powell was always a good friend in the, in the days when we were all in the band. And John Williams is an absolute doll. He's the baritone player now with yeah. the band. He is yeah. the nicest man in the world. And um, we knew T. Carson quite well when he was playing piano. We saw him recently in San Francisco at the Fairmont. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, Bill Hughes, of course, we, who's been there forever. We Have saw you Bill interviewed Hughes Bill? and Frank Foster together. Yes. They had to and give us some wonderful things. Frank there. Foster but, and, and uh, we used to live in the same building in yeah. New York. Oh, yeah? Yes, we used to meet in the laundry room. They did Foster and Hughes <laughs> for this series. Oh, you yes? Oh, good. That was great. That was great. Yeah. That had to be good. Yes. So and we're... Basie is still... Um, is a like a big cloud over all of it, you know? Yeah. He's yeah. still got his arms around well, everyone. he always will be. Yes. He always will be. Yeah. Because he was, he was the key. Uh, and Clark Terry this morning, was, uh, it's, it's often been written that the real secret to Bill Basie was that he always knew the right tempo for a tune. Yeah. And Clark told the story of uh, Little Darling? Yeah, when Neil Hefty brought Neil it in. Neil Hefty brought it in and says, here's the tempo, you know? And, oh, yes. And Basie says, no, no. <laughs> this is the tempo. Yeah. And they played it that way, and it was a huge hit. And as Clark said, yeah, if they played it with Hefty's uh, 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 speed, it would have been another, who heard of it? Yes, you know? it would have been gone long ago. But he had that, and, and, and that, I mean, and he had a sort of a mystic, I mean, all the, all the people I've ever met who've played in a band speak of him with reverence. And I don't know, that's not true of other, even Ellington, who was a great one. Mm -hmm. There are people who played with Ellington who don't speak highly of him. Mm -hmm. And certainly there are people who played with Benny Goodman who don't speak highly of wow. him. No. In fact, it's that hard to true. find one who does. <laughs> yes, he's, he's quite a legend. Yes. <laughs> With that. Benny Goodman's stories are wonderful. They're all very funny uh -huh. yes. stories of things he did. Yes, yes. But uh, Basie had something that, you know, your husband still reveres him. Oh, absolutely. He still calls him Mr. Basie. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always calls him Mr. Basie. A couple of the players have mentioned that we've seen that they had never played in any other bands that could swing at a soft and slow tempo mm -hmm. right yeah. you know, yeah. That's one of the hardest things for bands to do, is to be soft and slow but still, yeah. still be sure. happening. Well. And they All those that. wonderful oh, Nestico was. arrangements that oh, yeah. nobody plays them yeah. like the Basie Band. No, that's All right. those Queen that's Bee right. and lovely things that that's he right. arranged. Well, there's, there's a whole... Terrific. There's a whole library of stuff that nobody plays like Basie Band. Right. Even the new, ba even the current Basie band doesn't play as well as they were, you know. Although the new Basie band is not all that bad. Yeah. You know? I haven't heard them for a while. I think that I hardly would know anybody left in the band. I mean, yeah. Bill Hughes and John Williams. 
probably on the in the. Um, you know Frank Foster. Oh, I know Frank. Yes, Frank. I don't count Frank. He's just there all the oh, time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Um, no, I was thinking of the players and the bass player. I, I sort of know. Ah, oh, Sonny Connor's gone. Sonny's gone. Yeah. Yes. I forget uh, the name was like. Oh, that's it. Was a Cleveland. Cleveland, uh, is it Cleveland East? Isn't it awful? I should I, remember. I think it was. I'm Cleveland. Trying. Not Grover Cleveland. No. That was president. Cleveland Eaton. And there was Grover Mitchell, who used to be right. in the band. Yeah. That's another name. Yeah. Yeah, there's some some kind of young young players now. Yes. But it, they got to carry it on. You know. But it's something to be in the Basie band, so they have yeah. a standard yeah. to to keep up. Right. I, I, was always, to I was always uh, uh, surprised to see Kenny Hanks sitting there. Yes, little Kenny. Oh, yes. Kenny's a good friend, too. Well, no, no, but, but the horn's bigger than he is. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> and he gets up and the horn sort of dwarfs Yeah. <laughs> it's like Scott Hamilton when he first came, yes. came out. He was just a a 20 whisk. pounds dripping wet, you know, and that horn was bigger than he was. You know who else was, uh, was a, a nice person in the band? Danny Turner who also just recently passed away. Did you know Dan who? Danny Turner? No. And uh, he was an alto player. And uh, he was he was very nice and very sweet. And he uh -huh. just died about three weeks ago. No, I so didn't know him. I didn't know him. You, you would know him if you saw him. Oh, yeah. probably, He was yes. very unobtrusive. Yes, yes, yes. A well. small guy, sat next to Kenny Hing. Yeah, OK. <laughs> well, you didn't notice I, him. It was hard for me to get past Kenny Hing. <laughs> Yeah. And, but, uh, well, this has been wonderful. Well, thank you. Do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to leave uh, I, our, I, our, our watches? You know, we're, we're, going to, we're going to extract some of this and stick it in a Joe Williams documentary. Well, I, I, um, I just any... hope all, all orchestra wives, if that's the word, could be as lucky as I feel I have mm. been. Well, right. uh, this is really not part of the documentary, but I must. Well, that's all right. <laughs> I must. I must say to you that I think Joe has been very, very fortunate to have you. Oh well, thank you. And very I much. still say that the 70th birthday party that you put on for him in Las Vegas was the greatest party I've ever been to. Mm. It was absolutely. Fabulous. I thought that was fun. I must say, we absolutely had the Basie fabulous. band. Wow. And uh, George Shearing played, didn't he? Yes. Yes. Uninvited. In fact, he couldn't. He couldn't stop. He was enjoying no, it. and he started to play uh, the introduction every day. Yes. And said, "Joe, get up here and sing." <laughs> In the bassy band. It was great fun. Yeah, it was a great party. All right. So. Good. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank God you. God bless. I hope you can extract something out of this. Oh, we will. So we will. Good. Okay. Wrap it. Trouble.